Now, let's move on and discuss cholangitis. Cholangitis results from an obstruction of biliary drainage in the common bile duct. As a result, the gallstones that migrate either from the gallbladder or de novo primary common bile duct stones create an obstruction leading to secondary infection of the bile system. Cholangitis is classically described in terms of physical findings as Charcot's triad. This includes right upper quadrant abdominal pain, fevers, and jaundice. I think this bears repeating. Right upper quadrant pain, fevers, and jaundice makes up the Charcot's triad. What findings might, you, might be indicative of cholangitis? Again, your chemistries may be quite normal. Your white blood cell count may be elevated, but unlike symptomatic cholelithiasis, your total bilirubin may be elevated because there's a common bile duct obstruction. Similarly, alkaline phosphatase may also be elevated, as may be ASD and ALT due to congestion. Let's take the Charcot's triad one step further into Raynaud's pentad. Again, fever, jaundice, right upper quadrant abdominal pain, coupled with hypotension and confusion is significant for a patient who has clinical deterioration as a result of cholangitis. This poses a surgical emergency. What are some common findings of cholangitis? Again, the patient may present with symptoms and signs very similar to acute cholecystitis, such as the Murphy sign. To remind you, it's an arrest of inspiration with, uh, with deep palpation of the right upper quadrant. When one obtains an ultrasound, one can see gallstones or a common bile duct stone with dilation. Measurement of the common bile duct is very, very important. Although there is no specific rule dictating how large of a common bile duct is considered large, generally, generally speaking, one gets one millimeter of diameter of common bile duct per decade of life. In terms of laboratory findings, liver function tests may be abnormal as previously described. How do we manage cholangitis? In my mind, the schematic discusses whether or not the patient has any hemodynamic instability. Does the patient have hypotension? With hypotension, the diagnosis is then biliary sepsis. Antibiotics are immediately started and the surgical emergency requires emergent drainage of the common bile duct so that the bile has appropriate drainage. This doesn't necessarily mean surgery, but the common bile duct can be drained via percutaneous techniques. Remember, if you're presented with a scenario and the patient presents with cholangitis and has hemodynamic instability, the appropriate action or the next management is, um, is not further workup, rather it is to do emergent drainage of the common bile duct, most likely percutaneously. Now, what about the patient with cholangitis that does not have any hypotension? In those patients, antibiotics are started and we still want to drain the common bile duct, but it's no longer necessarily the emergency situation that a patient who's hemodynamically unstable would be. This is an endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, commonly known as an ERCP, with the patient sedated or intubated. An endoscopy specially designed for an ERCP is passed through the stomach, the duodenum, into the papilla, through the sphincter of OD. In this direction, contrast can be injected through the common bile duct system, not only potentially diagnostic for obstruction, but maybe therapeutic. During these procedures, particularly for common bile duct obstruction, it's fairly routine to, to uh, perform a sphincterotomy where the sphincter of OD is incised. This would allow easier passage of any stones in the common bile duct. During this procedure, GI doctors will insert multiple instruments into the common bile duct to clear it of stones. This is an image of a percutaneous transhepatic cholangiogram. Notice that the ERCP instrument is no longer in place. This is because the technique of a percutaneous transhepatic cholangiogram is done in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen through the liver into the biliary system. This is also potentially diagnostic and therapeutic. A drain is usually left in place after this procedure to allow proper drainage of the bile. What if percutaneous or ERCP methods fail? The patient still requires 
appropriate drainage. Well, that's where surgeons come into play. Here is the image high definition of intraoperative common bile duct exploration. This can be performed in open or laparoscopic fashion. The most important thing for you to remember is, if percutaneous methods fail, the next management is to continue until the common bile duct is drained of bile. In this situation, the common bile duct will be incised, stones will be released, and a T-tube or silastic tube will be left in place and brought exteriorized um, through the right upper quadrant of the abdomen to allow bile drainage until the common bile duct has healed. Some important clinical pearls to remember. It is very important to recognize cholangitis early to facilitate expedient management, which usually requires drainage of the biliary system. You must have a high index of suspicion in diabetic patients for a more serious gallbladder infection. In diabetic patients or patients on steroids, they are more likely to present with gangrenous cholecystitis if not on antibiotics or have surgery in a timely fashion. For your examination, remember, if the physical examination or the ultrasound shows equivocal findings for cholecystitis, your next step in management should be to obtain a HIDA scan to confirm. With the HIDA scan, you're looking for a cystic duct obstruction or non-filling of the gallbladder. Thank you very much for joining me on our discussion of gallstones.